Hi YouTube, how are you doing? And welcome back to Phasmophobia. Today is a special day because when we are recording this video, it is the three year anniversary, which for that, I already did a very special video where we went back in time and played on old Phasmophobia. If you want to watch that one, I'll link it over in the top right. However, I also wanted to do something with the actual current version of the game, obviously, because so much has changed. And what I want to do today is talk about every single item in the game and give you a hidden mechanic for each of these items that you probably didn't know. That's just something I thought of yesterday and I wrote up a whole list of all kinds of little things that a lot of people probably don't know about. Even the most veteran player, I promise you, will learn something from this video. I would Let me know down below how many of these you already knew. Probably quite a few because some of the items are not very deep, but a lot of them are. And I really hope you enjoy. If you're not subscribed, please do so. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. But let's not waste any more time. Let's hop into the game. Let's go. Alrighty, we're playing just on regular nightmare mode. We're just going to play a few games while I'm talking because I already know I'm going to be talking for a lot. So, uh, first of all, I just I'm going to talk about hidden things as well as just like overall things uh, about the game. The items I like to start with is the uh, EMF and the thermo sometimes uh, and the vo photo cam because there's not much to say about the head cam besides the head cam allows you to drop your flashlight and no longer use it, which basically unlocks a completely new inventory slot uh, that you would otherwise waste on a, on a flashlight. You can now use on having an additional item in your inventory. Now, another thing you might not know about the head cam is that it has uh, that it counts as an electronic. So if you're during the hunt, you have you have it on the ghost will detect you and will potentially kill you uh and uh, before i enter there's one thing i want to talk about because it absolutely blew my mind this is the sound sensor the sound sensor can do so much more than i originally thought we all know that when you place the sound sensor we're obviously going to play normal as well i just wanted to start off with this one because it just blew my mind you probably already know this but i didn't know uh and i had like a like a YouTube thumbnail face on my face when when I heard about this for the first time. You probably know that when you click over here, it increases the range, which by the way, first of all, that's a hidden thing. These ranges are an absolute fucking scam. They're actually like half as much as they show on the map. For some reason, the map ranges that it shows here is a complete fucking scam. So I don't know, they should, I already bug reported that, they they need to update those. So yeah, don't don't think that when you set it all the way to the max, it covers the entire house, because it absolutely doesn't. But that's not why I'm here. Everyone knows that, but what I didn't know until recently is that you can actually hold the sound sensor and right click it to change it and make it into a different mode. This is circle mode. This is cone mode in front of you, I think. And this is line mode, two cones to either side of you. So what you can do, you can place it like this. And then let's say you want to like specifically uh, hear sounds from the living room. You can point it like that, or maybe it's the other way around. It, I would s assume it's pointing this way, but that's weird. Cause I, can I rotate this? Wait, I guess I have to place it like this then. Which is weird. I feel like they didn't really think about this. I feel like they didn't really expect anyone to use this. That's why they, <laughs> like, made you place it backwards and stuff. They just didn't really think about it. But I'm assuming that's going to work. Um, yeah, there you go. So now it's pointing towards the living room. And then you only get sounds from that direction. Which is, like, a little neat thing that probably a lot of people already knew. I saw some people, when I first mentioned that, people in the comments were like, Oh, that's the first time ever that I knew something before you did. Which, yeah, probably because I didn't know until, like, two days ago. All right. Um, the uh, other items. The, you might see this right here. I use the tier one thermo. I have made a whole video about the tier one thermo being better than the tier three, which is kind of the hidden mechanic for this one. Because the tier one thermo, not only will it like immediately, unlike the tier three, where you have to hold a button, the tier one thermo will immediately show you if you're in the ghost room, but it can also be used to really quickly detect roaming ghosts, which I'll show that once we found the ghost room here, which before we keep talking, and talking and talking let's quickly try and find where the ghost room is hello ghost where are you at because you haven't really made any noise yet oh yeah it's here okay nice we found the ghost room so the garage is the ghost room as per the, <laughs> the loud sound which uh i guess this is not a hidden mechanic about the items but you cannot turn that off 
until you grab this key, which everyone knows. However, a thing that you also should know, especially if you play multiplayer, is that anyone can pick that up and everyone can then click the car. It's not like the one person that picked up the the car key is the only one that can touch this. No, everyone can do that. Um, all right, let's uh, quickly grab a few more items so we can, because the, the items I brought in here are, are the simple items. The photo cam doesn't really have any secrets. I think the main secret, the main like hidden mechanic with the photo cam is that if you take 10 correct photos, 10 three-star photos, you will, and you also do all the objectives and you get the ghost correct, that will give you a, um, a perfect game which is actually a special like reward that gives you a ton of extra money so that is something to keep in mind when taking photos and the other thing is that it's actually extremely easy to get 10 three star photos because and this is kind of a crossover between salt and the the photo cam salt and the photo cam are incredibly powerful together you can place nine salt which if you have the tier two or tier three that's how much salt you have you can place that all on top of its uh, of each other just in one spot and then during a hunt you can get the ghost to walk over that salt and then right on that spot you can take nine photos back to back to back to back fill up the entire book almost completely only one photo remaining which i guess you can take the bone photo or like the cursed possession photo like right here you can take the cursed possession and then nine salt photos and boom you got all three star photos which is like a really quick way to instantly get um a perfect game if you're looking for that uh, another thing which luckily we have the voodoo doll right here because that's something i wanted to talk about with the writing book the writing book is obviously very simple some of these are going to be very simple because there's just not much depth to the item the writing book you place it the ghost can write in it that's as simple as this item is however a good thing you should know is that if you have either the tarot cards or the voodoo doll and you use it you can actually trigger writing from the ghost there is, if you, so if you use the voodoo doll, it'll trigger an interaction, which that interaction can also be writing. Now, until recently, this could also be dots. You could also get dots this way, but since the new update, you can't do that anymore. So the voodoo doll can only be used to get writing, but that's a really nice thing. Let's quickly see. Okay, now we can keep talking. Kapodo. Thank you. Now we can talk about the uh, tier one thermo here and the hidden thing that I mostly want to talk about, which I've made a whole video, like a whole 50 minute video talking in great detail about like sh and showing you more about this, but I can just quickly explain it real quick. Um, this number that it's on right now, this like uh, notch above zero, that is the minimum temperature for a ghost that doesn't have freezing evidence. If it's stuck on this level for a while, you can rule out freezing if you're playing on professional, intermediate, or amateur. That's just the way the the the, the temperature system has been uh, like coded or been designed. Um, so what you can do with the thermo, as soon as the ghost leaves, the room will warm up, right? And you can immediately see that on the thermo because as soon as that temperature rises from this fixed point here you can instantly know okay the ghost is roaming i should check in some other rooms so the tier one thermo can actually be used to pretty much immediately detect if the ghost is roaming which after a while you can also like if the temperature keeps rising eventually you can say okay the ghost room's probably changed so then you can rule out gorio etc so the tier one thermo is in my opinion like super powerful compared to the um compared to the t3 tier 3 version where you get a random range which by the way um i have asked the devs i was wrong uh i remember cj telling me that the range of the tier 3 thermo is only one degree compared from the real temperature but apparently it's three degrees by design so it wasn't bugged it's just supposed to give you this like three degree range around the actual temperature uh which is kind of ridiculous in my opinion that makes it so bad another item that i have that's not the tier three is the glow stick i've talked about that in that video as well so if you uh want to know it in great detail uh by the way i'm gonna take this because i, I want to talk about that as well um you you can see that one but basically they have changed the game to have this whole like charging system where you can charge up fingerprints and then take photos of them however you don't have to worry about any of this shit if you're using a glow stick because let's say there's a fingerprint here all you have to do is just throw it on the ground and boom like that you can see the fingerprint take a photo you don't have to charge it up at all so that's why i prefer the the tier one glow stick because you just don't have to worry about that um 
not necessarily a hidden mechanic, but more like a really useful tip for the dots, is how do you place the dots in the most effective way? I have heard people say that they prefer the tier two dots over the tier three because the tier three moves around so much, which causes it to sometimes not cover the whole room. However, I have a really good tip on how you can make sure that it actually does cover the whole room. Um, the way to do this is place them on opposite side of the room really quickly. So I'm gonna place this one, then I'm gonna immediately run over to the other side and I'm gonna place this one. Because of the way they spawn in, they are now pretty much perfectly synced, opposite. I, this is as perfect as you're gonna get them. By the time this one goes here, the other one goes there, and they're like perfectly gonna go like this, back to back to back, and like cover as much of the room as possible. Now this is a little hard to see that it does it so perfectly in this room, but if I were to do it in a smaller room, you're gonna like, it's gonna blow your mind just how good this is. Um, let's see, for example, um, I think the living room might actually work. Yeah, if I do it in the living room right here, so you place this one, and then you place this one immediately, and then they spawn in, and look at this. They, this one goes like, goes that way when that one is going this way, and they just like completely alternate perfectly and cover the whole room at all times, which just makes it like extremely easy to get dots really, really quickly. So yeah, I, that's like a, a there's not really another hidden mechanic. The dots itself obviously has some hidden mechanics. Uh, the Gorio. The Gorio you can only see with the video cam, which that is, I don't have a video cam right here. If you have a Gorio, uh, let's place these back. So in, ca in case we need to get dots, uh, I'm gonna go grab a video cam real quick, one sec. Alrighty, so we have a video cam now. Uh, the video cam obviously can be used to see dots. This is not necessarily an item guide, by the way. If you want to see like me go just using every item and showing you how to get evidence with them, uh, that's just that's a different thing. I just wanted to talk about some little thing you might not have realized uh, about each of the items. Um, it shows you orbs if you like point it in the room. Which oh hi, uh, fuck, <laughs> unexpected. I'm just gonna try to stay alive real quick, if you don't mind. Please stay away. This one should be over. There we go. All right, we're fine. I'm going to take a pill. I don't want to die again, which, by the way, I have a little thing, obviously, about the sanity pill. I'm not going through this very... I wanted to make it some, like, normal gameplay as well, so we're just also playing the game. Uh, I can't see my sanity right now. Um, but... The sanity pill, the tier three version, sanity pills besides that are just, they give you sanity. That's it. There's not much more to it. You can, I don't count this as a secret. Some people like tell this to me as if they've just invented bread and they're like, dude, I just cracked the code of Phasmo. Yes, I know. You can glitch out every item by picking them up the, at the same time as another person. And you can basically like duplicate the items. I'm not there for those type of glitches. In my opinion, that's just straight up cheating. If you want to do that, more power to you do whatever you want to do uh but uh that's not my type of not my type of thing um so obviously you can, you can dupe the things but that's i'm not interested in that but anyway um the tier threes have a special thing which you probably know is that they give you infinite stamina for uh like 10 seconds the duration of them however it's very important to remember that they don't actually give you stamina they just prevent your stamina from draining what does that mean? That means that if I run out of stamina and then I use the sanity pill, I can't sprint right now. I have to wait for my stamina to regen and then I can sprint. So they actually, instead of giving you stamina, they lock your stamina in place for 10 seconds. So what you have to be really careful of if you're like using these during a hunt to get away from the ghost, to not first run out of stamina then use it because then you're just gonna die make sure to use it before you run out so then you have infinite stamina for 10 seconds which is actually really important it's also a bug so it's probably gonna get fixed soon but anyway um i just wanted to tell you uh the lighter the lighter is uh very simple you light it it gives fire and you can light candles with it and you can light smudge sticks with it however uh what you might not know is that it actually counts as a light source when dealing with the on Rio. So if you're dealing with an on Rio, if you don't know, uh, it's the ghost that is afraid of fire. So if there is a fire source nearby, it will blow that out before it starts its hunt. Basically fires and candles count as 
crucifixes for that. So if you only have a smudge stick, for example, you might think, oh, I can't test for Onrio. Yes, you can. You can just pull out your lighter, keep it lit. And if the ghost keeps blowing out your lighter instead of hunting, you know it's an Onrio. So that's another tip. Uh, anyway, there is one in specific. This one, this is my like golden goose here, I hope at least. Uh, what was I grabbing? Oh yeah, I was just taking sanity pills. The one tip that I have already told on a video before, so maybe people recognize it from that. But this is the one thing that I think a lot of people are not gonna know, which is a very special trick with the tier three motion sensor, which is actually really, really cool in my opinion. It's a bit hard in a room like this um, because this room is very large. So I'm gonna have to find the ghost first. Basically, you can move the motion sensor around and find the ghost. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work in- Oh, there, you can find the ghost by moving the motion sensor around really quick. So first of all, let me explain how they work. The motion sensor, if you place it, it has this range around it in which it will detect the ghost. Now, it won't just always point at the ghost. The way it works is that if the ghost enters the circle, it'll point at the ghost. And then it won't point at it again while it's in the circle. It will only point at it again once it leaves the circle. However, you can do something. Let's see, is it actually here? No, it's not actually here, I think. Oh, maybe it is. Let's see, I'm gonna quickly do this. Um, it is here, okay. What you can do is, uh, so while it's in the circle, you don't get additional information. So what the problem is, in my opinion, is that you don't really know, did it just enter the circle? Did it just leave the circle? Like where did it exactly go? In that regard, the tier two motion sensor is way more powerful because the tier two motion sensor allows you to like detect if a ghost is moving to the right or to the left, um, like which way the ghost is going. Um, However, you can know the position of the ghost because there is a little trick you can do, which is probably a bug. Once again, they're probably going to fix it. If you take the motion sensor and you place it away from the ghost, uh, it's going to first point at the location. This is, it's obviously a bug. So you saw right there how it lit up. What it was just pointing towards was where the ghost was when you picked it up. So right over there the ghost was standing there when i placed it back it pointed at that again for some reason i don't know why it does that but basically if i now place it back it'll point at the ghost again and then i can place it back it'll point in a random direction which doesn't matter and then i can place it back and once again detect oh there's the ghost now i can place it backwards it'll do a random direction and then i can just keep track of the ghost by moving it away from the ghost and then moving it closer to the ghost i can keep track of the exact position of the ghost at all times by by moving the motion sensor away and then placing it back it's an extremely useful like if you want to know where the ghost is exactly just like spam the motion sensor move it away move it back and boom i know exactly it's standing right there if i now want to use spirit box where are you are you here oh the bloom is on look at that i haven't seen that in a while where are you are you here are you close are you friendly it pointed at the ghost um the, the spirit box let's start so that is for the motion sensor it's just like super useful thing where you can uh like replace the motion sensor and you can just immediately know okay it's here um oh it's walking in and out of the circle i hope i explained that properly uh maybe for some people that are new to phasmo that went completely over their head uh, but basically just replacing it moving it away because if you just place it back on the ground like if the ghost is in this circle and i keep placing it back over and over again it won't point at the ghost because it's too it's like too smart for that but if i move it wait a minute i know what's going on here oh when i replace it it points at the ghost because it left the circle oh now it makes sense okay so if i place it here it's gonna point at the ghost and if i then like place it over here it's gonna play it's gonna point that direction because the ghost technically just left the circle by me moving the motion sensor, right? So that, okay, I just learned, I learned something new from this video. So you must have learned something too. <laughs> There's no way you didn't learn something from this video, you liar. Because <laughs> even I did. Okay, so there you go. Uh, so if you replace it, it technically leaves the circle so you can know it gives you like a it points in the direct It's actually super useful. Like you place it back. It points at the ghost. You place it here. It points at the uh, the location of the ghost. So yeah, just just all around like replacing moving the motion sensor around is where it shines But anyway enough talk about that uh, crucifix crucifix tier 2 or tier 3 
um, can stop a cursed hunt. There's really no more, like, no other real secret things about the crucifix. They just stop hunts in the range that they show. Like, this is the range they show. The only thing you need to know is that for demons, this range is 50% bigger. So you, you won't see that, but you can, like, guesstimate where that would be. So you can uh, try and figure out if this is a demon based on if it's hunting close to or far away from crucifixes. Um, but it can stop a cursed hunt. How does that work? In order to stop a cursed hunt, the ghost or the crucifix has to be at the place where the ghost is gonna hunt, which for something like the summoning circle, this is extremely easy. You just place it under the like summoning circle. That's it, uh, because that's where the ghost, that's where the hunt is gonna start. But for uh, other items, it's not as predictable where the hunt is gonna happen. So usually for, if you're using the voodoo door or something, you place the, the tier three crucifix in the ghost room. And then if I use the, I'm just gonna spam this right now. I could potentially die here, but whatever. If I just keep using this, if I get the hard pin, there should be a hunt that happens. However, with the tier three crucifix, that doesn't happen and it stops the hunt. So that is something that, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I wanted to say something about every single item in the game. So obviously some of these items are just so shallow that they don't have any secrets. Uh, but that's, um, that's like a mechanic that if you haven't paid attention to the patch notes, you might not have known. Anyway, I'm going to take all the pills, um, because I don't want to die right now. Um, do we have any evidence, by the way? I'm so bad at this game. I haven't collected any evidence. Let's grab the salt here so we can test for uh, you or for f fingerprints, because that's another thing people that haven't read the patch notes might not realize that you can actually get fingerprints using salt now or foot UV light evidence, I should say. I'm also going to take in the this thing so we can show that um, the candles prevent your sanity to a certain degree, not entirely, but they, uh, the tier three version stops your sanity uh, by draining for, oh, I, it gives you a 66% uh, protection against sanity. So it'll drain 66% slower, which doesn't like, it doesn't make sure your sanity only drains up to 66. I had some people comment that in my comment section. They were like, wait, so does that mean that while you're holding a candle, your sanity can't go below 66? No, that's not what it means. It just means that it's draining at a 66% slower rate. That's all. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. Um, also, it blew out the candle there, which is something I wanted to talk about. I need to quickly... Uh, EMF there. Look at that! That's exactly what I wanted to show. I'm so happy that happened. Okay, so... The candle is actually very useful for getting uh, photos as well as EMF evidence because in the current version of the game, the uh, candle blowout counts as an interaction. So if the ghost blows out the candle, you can both take a photo of that. And it's also a way to really quickly get EMF evidence. So you can just put a candle in a room, get it, the ghost to blow it out, take a photo, light it back up. Uh, it blows it out again. You take another photo, etc., etc., etc. Which obviously isn't super important because the salt exists and the salt can give you like, as I said, can give you like nine photos instantly. Uh, but still, it's nice to have. So I'm just going to place this. This is how I usually place the salt. Um, you can also place it in bottlenecks like this. Uh, a little, uh, not necessarily hidden thing, but a, a, a neat mechanic that you should know for the salt is that the tier three version of the salt actually has a use like uh, both inside of hunts as well as outside of hunts. Inside of hunts, they'll slow down the ghost. Um, oh, here we go. It's gonna walk in the salt. Which, as you can see, that does not work for ghost events, by the way. The ghost events do not slow down. Uh, so yeah, we have no fingerprints here because that's... Uh, with the with, If the ghost steps in the salt... Uh, hey, what's up? <laughs> Welcome, Raiders. If I was just, Sorry, I have my, uh, my thing hidden here. Welcome, Koji. What's up? Um, I'm just talking about every single item in the game and giving a, like, a tip or hidden mechanic for each and every one of them. So you're coming in at the right time. Uh, my sanity is probably completely fucked, so I'm gonna get hunted very soon here. Um, I should really figure out what ghost it is. It's just annoying it's a tiny ghost. Uh, but yeah, welcome raiders. How are you guys doing? Um, so, the when a ghost steps in the salt, it'll leave UV footsteps behind, which you can also count as evidence now. Now, in this case, we're not seeing that, so we can't say... We, we can't select this evidence, obviously. Uh, we should also check that it's freezing. It's not freezing. Uh, a hidden tip. Not necessarily a hidden mechanic, but a really good tip. For nightmare mode. This is not about an item. 
For nightmare mode, a lot of people think that you can't rule out evidence because obviously, uh, since the ghost will hide one evidence, if I know it's not fingerprints, I can't just click fingerprints twice and rule it out completely, right? Because the ghost might be hiding fingerprints as an evidence. So instead, that doesn't mean you can't rule out any evidence at all. Because what I can do in this scenario, because I know it's not freezing because it's been exactly at this like threshold for a really long time now, and I know it's not UV, I can actually select both of these and because the ghost can only hide one evidence at a time, because I know both of these evidence are impossible, if it's one of these ghosts, it can't be one of these ghosts, because they couldn't be hiding both of this evidence. One of these evidences is going to be probably the hidden evidence for whatever ghost we're dealing with, but it can't hide both. So in this case, we can click on all of these, rule these out. Uh, so that is how you can still rule out evidence on nightmare mode, even though you can't... Like, you can rule out ghosts. Um, if you have pairs of evidence that you know it it can't be uh i'm gonna use spirit box real quick where are you are you here are you close yeah we got ema5 uh where are you are you here are you close are you friendly are you french where are you it's probably not spirit box which is so if it's also not spirit box so this is how you can pretty quickly rule out quite a few ghosts in nightmare mode so let's say that we know for sure which i i'm pretty sure it's not spirit box right you can click spirit box and uv rule out all those ghosts you can click spirit box and freezing rule out that ghost uh let's say we let's look for dots maybe it's not dots it could it's probably just a gorio in this case which actually th ties us back into the video cam the secret thing with uh with dots as well as video cams is that you need the combination of both to uh, find the Gorio dots. The Gorio dots are invisible to the naked eye. They can only be seen using a cam. However, they cannot be seen if you're in the room with the ghost. And it's quite literally exactly that. As long as you're in the room, they don't show. So as soon as I, boop, now I'm not in the room anymore. So this is how I like to get Gorio dots by just setting one foot outside of the ghost room. Oh, fuck. <gasps> if you set one step outside of the ghost room, that immediately counts as not being in the room with the ghost anymore, which then allows you to get Gorio dots. So let's stand here for a second till we probably get hunted. Come on. This is such a... I mean, in this case, it might be useful to have the tier two, right? Because you can put it... Oh, here we go. Well... It's hunting. Let's see if it's any special ghost. We have potential Oni here. Definitely not a Raichu. Is it Oni? It's blinking quite a lot, but not enough, right? It's not blinking enough for uh, for Oni. I'm gonna run the fuck away. Is it? It's not a Yokai. It's not a. Oh, it was an Airball Ghost event. Yeah, yeah. That's. A, I mean, that's a hidden. That's one of those hidden mechanics that everyone knows, right? If you get an Airball, you can rule out Oni. I was just so occupied talking about mechanics that I missed that. I'm running away. Which this is not about all the individual abilities of ghosts. If you want to see that, you can check out my ghost guide. This is about little little known facts. Your your local ghost hunter does not want you to know. Can you please chill the fuck out? Okay. Anyway, turn the lights back on. So now the ghost is going to be insanely annoying and we should probably grab some smudge sticks. Uh, let's talk about the smudge sticks. Because the smudge sticks are actually... Uh, I'm going to grab a crucifix and a smudge stick. So the, it's probably a Gorio here because it's not showing any evidence and Gorio dots are incredibly hard to get. But you can't just stand outside of the room like that and just watch for a while. Um, we also know it's probably not an Obake because it didn't change. We know it's not a Raichu because it didn't speed up. We know it's not a Wraith because it stepped in the salt. We know it's not a Mylan because it was uh, like normal loud. We know it's probably not a Shade because it did a shit ton of ghost events throughout the time. Um, so we're down to Gorio and Spirit, which is both possible. That's how what the fuck? That was creepy. <laughs> All right, then turn on a the light there. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm fine. Okay, so the smudge stick. The smudge sticks, uh, um, it's a misconception that they get uh, very, like much better with every tier. Because on the shop on the shop screen, it says duration. Oh my God, this ghost. The duration gets longer with every upgrade of the smudge stick. So the tier one, I think is five seconds, the tier two, six, and the tier 
three seven or something like that like they go up by one second each that is purely the length of the burning animation which means nothing uh, it, it says nothing about what effect it has on the ghost itself so the effect that it has on the ghost is actually fixed across all of the th uh, smudge sticks every single one of them has a five second effect on the ghost with the tier one you just do the classic thing where the ghost like doesn't target you for five seconds can you shut the fuck up holy shit <laughs> um oh it's using the crucifix which by the way another hit not necessarily hidden thing but with the crucifix right now the bug is back where if the ghost uses the crucifix it turns off all the lights which is a bug that was in the game a year ago and suddenly is back now which is really silly uh, i'm gonna smudge the ghost here um because i don't want to have it do a uh, hunt oh my god it's still gonna be so annoying um i'm just gonna grab a smudge stick again and <laughs> run away from this ghost uh, so basically the effect of the smudge stick is five seconds for each and every one of them for the tier two it's a slow effect for the tier three it's a stun effect which that stun effect used to be bugged during the stun it used to still speed up uh if it had line of sight with you however they recently fixed that so they recently made the tier three smudge sticks way better again because that was actually really annoying because if you were looking at the ghost while it was stunned it would like go get it super super fast once it was done being stunned which was really annoying so you don't have to worry about that anymore so that's something you might not have realized uh the tier three smudge sticks are are better again um okay anyway so uh with the gorio by the way little known fact if you use the monkey paw which we don't have the monkey paw here and you wish for sanity it will still make the gorio change ghost room there's a side effect of the i wish for sanity wish which is that it changes the ghost room of the ghost. Um, and that still applies to even the Gorio, which technically shouldn't be able to change ghost room at all. Uh, so that's kind of uh, kind of a little, little thing. Another thing, with the spirit box, um, yeah, that's it. With the smudge stick, uh, the, the effect doesn't get stronger or doesn't get longer every upgrade. However, it is longer against the Moroi, which is the, this is insane, which is the, um, did you use that? That was too quickly after the smudge. That was... So it is a Gorio, right? It's a Gorio. Let's just hop into the next mission because this ghost is never going to leave us the fuck alone. Um, against the Moroi, the effects of the smudge sticks are 50% longer, which means that the slow effect of the tier 2 is going to be 7.5 seconds, and the stun effect of the tier 3 is also going to be 7.5 seconds. So that's actually, like, the way... You can also test for Moroi besides just them being way faster. Before we leave Tanglewood, there was one more thing that I wanted to say that I forgot in the video, which is it has to do with the sanity system. The new sanity system, I made a whole video about it if you want to check out more details, but there's one specific trick that you might not have realized, which I didn't even test in that video. I put it in a pinned comment, but a lot of people might not have read that, which is that for rooms that are like this, uh, that have multiple rooms but are still considered one room, there's actually a neat little trick. If you light any one of these light switches, it will be considered as if the whole room is lit up. So even if the ghost, like, breaks this light switch, you can still light that one up, which will still prevent your sanity from draining in the whole room. I don't know, it's probably a bug, so it might get fixed in the future. Uh, there was also a bug previously where you could turn on the light switch while the breaker was off, but they have fixed that one already, so that's no longer in the game. Now, another thing, uh, related Related to the sanity system that I wanted to talk about is because uh, if you have the light on in a room now your sanity is prevented in the whole room unless it's really big maps and stuff like that but for most small maps this is the case or for all the small maps this is the case uh, it might be uh, you might be asking yourself what is considered what room for example in this situation uh, it's really unclear where the living room stops and where the foyer starts uh, where the kitchen starts so what you can do is if you want to test this for yourself is just place a sound sensor somewhere for example example this is this living room is this master bedroom we don't know you can place the sound sensor and then look at the chart over here and it'll say the name of the room that it's in so you know okay this is in this case the living room so that uh, area is still considered living room and you could try this on every single one of the maps but anyway let's continue with the video i just wanted to add those few things i'm assuming this is a gorio we didn't see the dots there but it hasn't changed ghost room at all and it was uh it hunted early there you go it was a gorio which that is my, I mean, this is, as I said, not, not about the ghost necessarily, but I might as well say it. The best way that I figure out Gorio, my game is completely frozen, is um, 
If you don't get any evidence for a really long time, you're probably dealing with the Gorio. The Gorio, I think, has UV, EMF, and dots, but because Gorio dots are fixed because it's like the way you figure out that ghost, uh, it like it's it's the it's the ability of the ghost um, is to have tricky dots. So they've made it so that if you have lower evidence, they are always gonna select dots as like a forced evidence, which means that it's really really hard to get any evidence for the Gorio. Um, so if I am playing around and I don't get anything, I know all right, I'm probably dealing with a with a Gorio here. I'm just gonna start normal with a flashlight this time, um, and I'm going to have a spare box because a thing that uh i sometimes i used to get way more questions about this i don't get them very much anymore but the um voice recognition in phasmo can be very broken the way the voice recognition works is that it uses your default windows microphone for the voice recognition and not this microphone right here the microphone that's set right here is or, or maybe they changed that actually did they change that recently i don't think they changed that um so this microphone is purely for multiplayer and also it's completely bugged the the microphone input level is currently bugged i don't know why it doesn't show anything it just doesn't do anything it just it's supposed to like show you here how much microphone it's picking up but it's not working right now so i don't know when they're gonna fix that but that's like a <laughs> i don't know what's happening um anyway i turn off the breaker it can't be a gin um because the gin can turn off the breaker hit apply me when i don't look at the streamer clicking apply <laughs> i clicked apply my friend um like i, I did dude I changed it to voice activation, clicked apply, and then it doesn't do anything. And then I changed it back to push the talk and I tried it as well and it didn't do anything. What are you, you don't gaslight me. This <laughs> what the hell, man? Obviously it doesn't work. <laughs> anyway, um, so if your microphone is not working for whatever reason, um, you can go into the game settings right here. And instead of selecting either Vosk or Windows, you can select text as your voice recognition which what does that mean it gives you a pop-up once you activate something that can take voice input so this is actually a great way if for some reason your microphone is not being picked up this game or you really want to check for spirit box you can change it to text to speech and then you can just spam these questions and you'll get a response if you're in the dark with the ghost in the room um and some similarly oh my god jesus christ oh this is another thing i wanted to talk about with the spirit box um if you get a ghost event that is incredibly useful for using the spirit box what you can do after the ghost event is over you can pick up the spirit box walk on top of the ghost and spam the questions because when the ghost does a ghost event it actually physically teleports the ghost to that location which means that after the ghost event is over it'll still be standing there which means that you can spam the spirit box and quickly get spirit box evidence if it is a spirit box ghost which in this case doesn't seem to be a spirit box ghost now it was pretty unfortunate it was a, on the border of a room because that's another thing some people might not know about the spirit box is that it only works if you're in the same room with the ghost if the ghost let's say this is the ghost room and the ghost is like um in this room if i step one little toe outside of this room it does not work you have to be in the physical same room space with the ghost to get uh, a response it also used this computer here where oh well sorry i have this still enabled so you can spam here we're probably not oh hi another time you can um it's doing lots of singing ghost man you can walk on top of it click the thing and now i pretty much know like with a hundred percent certainty that this is not spirit box so for the rest of the game i can just don't bother bother with the spirit box so yeah voice text to speech is incredibly useful um if you have the monkey paw or the uh ouija board the bonus on the bed I'll, I'll take it in a moment i don't know if we have those we don't have them but um you might not know what you can do with those. Like, obviously, most people know, like, I wish for knowledge or I wish for sanity or uh, where are you on the Ouija board or where's the bone, stuff like that. But if you want to know all of them, you can um, you can turn on text to speech and then click on the board or right click with the monkey paw and it'll show you a list of every single one of the questions you can ask to those cursed possessions for the ouija board it's not an exhaustive list there's quite a few 
questions that are um, av available that aren't on the on the text-to-speech list for whatever reason, but if you want to know those, I made a video about the cursed possessions a little bit ago, so you can check that one out, where I went over all the questions. Um, it doesn't include the pickle question in the text-to-speech menu. Uh, you saw how long I can sprint, by the way, with the adrenaline pill right there. Uh, let's place this. Yeah, that is... Uh, I think text-to-speech is just a really useful trick to know about. Uh, oh, we get, we get orbs right there. Orbs are obviously linked to the video cam, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna take give you a tip about orbs as a tip for the video cam. They show you the ghost room. If uh, the ghost is, or if this is, wait, there's also aura or dots. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, um, so the orbs will always be in the ghost room unless you're dealing with a mimic, in which case it'll be in the room where the ghost is, which is a very th important distinction because that means that um, if you have ghost orbs that are moving around a lot, you're probably dealing with a mimic. Um, and it also really helps you in like keeping track of the ghost and where the ghost is. Hello there, um, instant from the future here. I'm wearing something new, sorry. I quickly have to record something. I was just gonna put this on the screen as a correction. However, I thought it was important enough to quickly record something. Oh, hi ghost. Uh, so it's actually, I'm obviously playing a new game, but it's apparently in the same area. Um, that this is not true at all. Mimic orbs and normal ghost orbs work in the exact same way. They just are in the ghost room. The mimic orbs don't actually follow the player, which I thought was the case for the longest time. I thought I've seen this and tested this many of th many times, but apparently this is not true. I just checked it with the developers themselves. So yeah, it is in fact not the case. And if you ever see this in a video, I will never say it going forward, obviously, but if you've seen it in a video in the past, then you know that it's just me having misinformation, which I always try to correct it when I have something wrong, or when I know or when I thought something was the case and it ends up being incorrect, which is a problem with this game, because it is so mysterious, because it's never really fully explained how the mechanics work, you're gonna make some mistakes, but I try to amend them. So yeah, there you go. Once and for all, mimic orbs work the exact same way as normal ghost orbs, which doesn't matter at all, but I thought I should let you know. Anyway, let's continue. The bone is on the bed? What did you say? There's no bone on the bed. Um, wait, did I, did I just pick it up and I didn't even think about it? Um, I was just talking about other shit. Uh, anyway, so you can track the ghost room. You Oh, the other bed by um, like looking for the orbs, which is incredibly useful. It's a, we don't need to get any more evidence because we already got two, two of the evidence uh, and you're only gonna get two evidence on Nightmare. But yeah, keep a, keep a track, keep, keep track of your orb for finding the ghost room and spirit box for finding where the ghost is because um, the spirit box obviously only responds in the in, if you're in the room with the ghost and not necessarily in the ghost room, which is the thing I see a lot of people do wrong. That's why the ghost events are so important to keep in mind. If the ghost is a ghost event, go use that to get spirit box because a lot of people I see like walk into the ghost room, ask on the spirit box three times, where are you? Are you French? Are you grandma? And then they throw it on the ground and never pick it up again. That's not enough, especially when the current version where the ghosts are roaming an absolute mega amount you should um i'm gonna take oh, i don't need this actually uh you should retry the spirit box quite a lot uh before you actually like give up on it uh we're gonna have that we need to escape the hunt i don't even need this i'm just gonna grab this one on the pillow i get it guys i get it <laughs> you guys are fucking obsessed with boners <laughs> what's the ure test the ure test is uh where it like closes it. So it, it drains your sanity and it closes a door completely. That's the that's how you can test for your There's also a very niche. Does it say it in the in the book here? I think so, right? Yeah, weakness. Smudging the Yurei's place of death will tra trap it temporarily, reducing how much it wanders. If you smudge the Yurei, it will not be able to leave the room for like 90 seconds which is something I actually physically never use. Um, but it is something that you might not have known about the smudge sticks. All right, let's just place this here. There you go, we found the ghost. Uh, what are we gonna be testing for? We're gonna be testing for uh, speed, speed, stupidness, and Yurei and Banshee is gonna be really, really annoying. Uh, 
or actually it allows me it perfectly segues me into the paramic i haven't talked about the paramic yet there's not much to say about the paramic especially not anymore there used to be a lot to say about the paramic because there was actually a way you could find the ghost room instantly using the paramic but they fixed the bug that made that possible so rest in peace uh paramic bug that is no longer a thing um but now you can still get the Banshee screen, which is something like things like that are so like repeated over and over again in my videos and probably in the community as a whole that I don't really consider those hidden abilities. But like, what else is there to say about the Paramic? Like there's, there's nothing. It's just an item you point at the ghost and it gives you whispers sometimes. For the Myling, there will be more whispers than usual, um, which is a, uh, I'm gonna put these over here. Which is, I guess, kind of a hidden thing as well. Which, it does say that in the book, by the way. So it's not hidden. Um, oh, hi. It's doing so many singing ghost events. You can also use the paramic to safely test for how fast the ghost is during a hunt. You can point the paramic at the ghost and then you'll hear their footsteps really clearly from, um, from like far away. Which is actually a fairly useful thing. Uh, that you can do with the paramic. I never really do it because I, I don't know. I just, uh, I just listen for the footsteps with my ears instead of the, uh, instead of the paramic. By the way, this is what I was talking about earlier. Did we get a, we didn't even take a photo cam. I need to take a photo cam. But this right here looks like just one, one pile of salt, but it's actually six piles of salt on top of each other. So you can take six photos off of this one pile and immediately almost entirely fill up your book, which is kind of crazy. Like it is a super powerful thing you can do um, with the salt. It's It basically makes getting a perfect game like piss easy. Uh, another thing, what have I not talked about yet? So the motion sensor has that secret thing that I, I really like that one. That is kind of the inspiration for this video. That like ability to track the ghost wherever it is by replacing the motion sensor. Um, tripods, by the way. I mean, everyone knows you can move them around. Um, they can also be used to get EMF because the ghost can actually th uh, throw a tripod even when there's no camera on it. So technically you could place it like in the ghost room and it's an item that can't really be moved, but you can still get EMF with it. But like, it's pretty much pointless. Another thing that's not necessarily secret, but that has made me completely stopped using the tripods is that if you place a camera on the tripod, it becomes so much smaller. Look at the size of the screen. Um, yeah, you can use the tripod against your teammate. I'll, I'll say something about that as well. But Look at the size of this camera when it's on the tripod and when I'm holding it myself. It's literally like more than twice as large when you're holding it in your hand. And this is especially noticeable for uh, the tier one and the tier two versions of the of the camera. So I just, just completely, because I don't use the, the camera from the truck. I just don't do that. I just look for orbs. If I see them, I just know it's orbs, check. And if I don't see them, I don't go to the truck and look again. Like the only reason I sometimes look from the truck is to see Gorio dots. Um, so I've just completely stopped using the tripods and only look through this for, for like only look um, when it's in my hand. Uh, anyway, we're gonna grab the, I don't wanna grab crucifixes. We'll grab this and I'm gonna grab, oh no, I need a photo cam. We can take all of the photos real quick. Which, as I said, the salt also slows down the ghost during a hunt, which, in my opinion, can actually be a detriment because it makes testing for speed a little bit trickier because suddenly the ghost is really slow, which can, like, fool you, or especially if you don't know that the salt was on the floor, you might think it's, like, a uh, a slow ghost, even like a, re or a Dio or something when it's not. I've thought that. I've, like, been, oh, this is a Dio, and then, like, stopped running away from it, and then suddenly realized, wait a minute, this is not a Dio. It was just stepping in the salt, and then that's how I lose. Um, I'm just gonna take all the photos. Where was this bone? Oh, there. <laughs> I see what you guys are talking about. That's why people were so obsessed with this, because it was a funny bone. Funny boner. But yeah, you can literally just spam photos. And there you go. And that's how I filled up the book literally using just salt and one bone photo look at how disgusting the salt is like i mean obviously this is something probably everyone knows but like just insane how powerful it is um yeah we're gonna drop that there and we're gonna use the paramic more 
is that we might get a banshee scream here this is actually like showing or probably going to be a fairly tricky ghost um i would like to stand in the dark here so i think i'm going to turn this light off uh, i should also turn off the dots here because they're extremely annoying on the paramic and then i can talk a little more these are secrets about the maps by the way if you uh on most small maps and a few big maps which is really annoying uh there are these secret riddles which if you solve those riddles uh you will get a little bit of a sneak peek to potentially the new map that is going to be added to phasmo at some point in the future uh which i won't don't want to spoil you if you want to see it you can look up my video on it um because i made a video about that anyway uh items let me let me go through my list now that we have pretty much covered most of the items so as i said the sound sensor range are super bugged on the map which is kind of strange um oh yeah with the emf uh i see people make this mistake all the time especially new players when the ghost is hunting you cannot ever 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 get emf5 even though it looks like it's going crazy and it's like hitting emf5 that is not emf5 it is just the the electronical item going crazy because of the ghost's interference so do not get fooled by that. Even if there was EMF-5, I've done this test uh, in the past. If there is EMF-5 and the ghost starts hunting, it'll stop giving you EMF-5. So there's physically no possible way to get EMF-5 during a hunt. Not even, I think, if the ghost is like far away from you. You literally just, the EMF just stops working during the hunt. Um, and instead, oh, whoops, I, I fucked something up. Um, you have to wait until after the hunt to be able to get emf5 again so that's one uh don't get it twisted um the ghost event with the spare box is just an incredibly important thing to learn uh the uh the this is an interesting one we were talking about this the cursed possessions a moment ago how you can use text to speech another thing that you might not know about the cursed possessions is that it did a whisper is that the shade actually has a hidden ability with the cursed possessions which is that it's the only ghost that can turn into a shadow model while it's being summoned by the music box or the summoning circle so if you see a shadow from those two cursed possessions you know that it's not or that it has to be a shade which is also bugged by the way um uh but it's hopefully gonna stay in the game uh what the fuck was that throw? That was an insane throw. But it can't be a poltergeist? What the fuck? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, let's see. So the Banshee scream that we're hopefully gonna get get here. Uh, oh yeah, the flash. I had a, I made up one because I was like, what am I possibly gonna give a tip about the flashlight for? There's currently a bug with the flashlight, which is that, you hear that? It if you have it selected like if it's your item in your hand at the moment and you press t it'll make the sound of turning off and on but it won't actually turn off and on which uh i think yeah you especially notice that when it's turned off because right now i can't turn it on the only way to turn it on is right clicking i can turn it off and on if it's not selected but not when it is selected which is really weird it's just like a bug obviously like a lot of these hidden mechanics that i'm giving you are bugs but that's just because this game is fucking like spaghetti code the whole the the whole way through um so yeah that is i guess just a little thing i just wanted to say something about the flashlight because i promised to say something about every item so there you go um the the writing book can be triggered with tower cards and voodoo or tower cards and voodoo dolls which is really useful um the let's see oh yeah the photo cam i wanted to say something about how a phantom works with a photo cam because i see a lot of people misunderstand it this um of when you take a photo of the ghost sometimes right after you took the photo the ghost disappears however that does not mean that it was a phantom because for the phantom there's actually a very specific way that you need to tell that you need to tell it apart from the rest when you take a photo of the phantom it'll disappear before you take the photo so when you look at the photo in the book uh which we don't have a ghost photo here so i can't show you uh whoops like if i hold the photo cam let's see you see how it's glitching out you see how the photo cam is like has a line effect on it that'll also be visible on the photo that i take oh fuck i took it too late there uh well i mean anyway that'll also be visible on the photo afterwards 
or like when you see it in the book. So if you look at a photo in the book and it says that it's a ghost photo and there is either a ghost visible or you can see any glitching effect at all, you know that it's not a phantom because sometimes the ghost is like really hard to see. So you can't see the ghost, but you can still see the glitching effect. But if you do not see a glitching effect, you do not see the ghost and it seemed like it disappeared right as you took the photo, then you know it's a phantom. So don't get it twisted. The ghost disappearing right after a photo photo does not mean that it is necessarily uh, a phantom immediately. So that's another thing uh, that I wanted to say. Also, currently there's another bug in the game that is also kind of a hidden trick with the uh, photo cam, which I guess was already in the game a long time ago, but they are trying to get rid of it is that you, if you have the ghost photo objective, if you have the objective, take a photo of the ghost during, or not during a hunt, but if take a photo of the ghost, um, you can take that photo um, after you already fill up the book with all photos. They don't want this. The devs want to remove this and they did remove it, but then they brought it back. They, they It was in the game, then they fixed it, then they brought it back. Oh no, it was in the game, then they tried to fix it, it didn't work, then they actually fixed it, it worked, and then they broke it again, and now you can take into photos again. So I don't know what the fuck they're doing over there, but you can now once again take the ghost photo after the book is already full, which is another, I guess, little hidden mechanic you might not have known. Um, the uh, tier one UV as well as the tier one thermo are better in my opinion than the tier three versions. Uh, and I have a whole video dedicated to that that you can check out. Uh, and also another thing that probably people know, you can't use the head cam to see orbs. That's not a thing. Anyway, with that, I think I've said something about every single item because I went through this list just now. Um, obviously there's a lot of stuff that is hidden with the ghosts themselves. Uh, it's not looking like it's a Banshee potentially. I think we should just get a hunt here. Uh, which, what curse possession do we even have? Is it gonna be the the summoning circle? It is a summoning circle. Let's just light it. Let's go. Um, so if I wanted to, another thing with the summoning circle, by the I might get a hunt here. Wait a minute. I need to be careful. Uh, with the summoning circle, you can actually instantly get all of the photos for the entire mission just using the summoning circle. You can place salt nine times underneath the the ghost. And then you can take both the ghost, the summoning circle photo, and then all the salt photos, and boom, you've immediately filled up the book. However, what you have to be careful of if you do that, which I didn't say during my um, first possession video, which I immediately was like, oh, fuck, I should have said that, is that you should take the photo of the summoning circle before you light the summoning circle. Because a lot of the time, if you take a photo of the, if you don't take that photo first, like when the ghost is in the summoning circle, it'll for some reason like count as a, a summoning circle, like a two star summoning circle photo instead of a three star ghost photo, which is really annoying. Like it's super silly how that works. Oh, ah! it, it did the annoying thing. Anyway, I'm gonna run. Is it slow? Normal speed, test for yokai. Hello ghost. Hello ghost. Hello ghost, hello, hello, hello. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? It sounds extremely slow. What the fuck? Is this normal speed? I'm losing my mind. It's a thing! <laughs> Probably? It sounds insane. It's an old day. Uh, let's just have it hunt one more time. We can rule that out completely. Um, it's touching lots of stuff. That's why I was doing so many ghost events. Okay, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Look at that. Um, what's weird, what I still need to figure out is sometimes when I'm using the voodoo doll. So the voodoo doll, by the way, is now like an insanely powerful curse possession because you can just place a uh, tier three crucifix in the ghost room and then spam the voodoo doll. And even if you get the harp in, it doesn't matter because the crucifix is going to stop it, which means that getting interactions out of the ghost using the voodoo doll has become a lot safer than it was before. Um, however, I still, if you know, let me know. If you like have, ten, let's say that you just spam the voodoo doll so hard. So there are like six different things active at the same time what gets shown on the emf i'm assuming it shows like the first three and then what happens if there's another one does it like push the list upwards like does it show the newest ones 
or does it show the oldest ones and what if there's an emf5 in there does that get priority like how does that's just one of those things that i like it's a very niche thing that I'd have to, I would have to figure out myself. It threw my photo cam, video cam, which is another thing you might not have known if you didn't pay attention to the update, is that the ghost can now throw um, the uh, video items or the video cameras around as well as the tripods. Oh, here we go. Let's see, are you? Oh, you are so fucking slow. <laughs> Hello there, Lisa. <laughs> Come with me. He's so slow. What a snail. If you have any other hidden mechanics, obviously I didn't explain. Like, I can do a full guide on everything Phasmo, ghosts included, items included, <laughs> like all maps. Cause there's, I could do another guide like purely about maps. Cause there's so many little things that you learn over time with like little quirks that each map has, like certain cursed possessions are better on certain maps. Um, certain ghost rooms are harder than other ghost rooms. Like there's so many uh, tricky things that you learn over time. Um, so there is basically not a pot. Like if I were to make a guide like that, it would literally take 10 hours and my voice wouldn't survive the whole way. So yeah, I thought I'd do a little bit of a, a different thing where I just give you a little tip about each and every one of the items. And I really hope you enjoyed that. I'm assuming this has to be a thing, right? Um, so yeah, some items are easier. Oh yeah, that's another thing before we leave. Uh, wait, before we before we leave, uh, the tier three or, or a, any uh, tripod actually can be, has, an, has a hitbox for whatever reason they have added a collision box to the tripods which means you didn't hear this from me you heard this from psycho is that you can use them to murder your friends which psycho has used it to murder me if you want to watch that video you can find it on the channel um if you place them like right around corners like this you can actually get like stuck on them you see how my character like moves around really weirdly because I'm getting stuck on the tripod for a little bit. So if you place them in corners like that, which don't do this in, in random public lobbies, only do this for, with friends, you just get stuck on them and I can't move through it. And I'm just like, I'm going to die if the ghost is right behind me. So yeah, that is another <laughs> hidden thing you might not have known. This one just blows my mind, man, that, that this has been in the game. <laughs> and I just never realized. So silly. But yeah, that was, uh, let me know if you like these type of videos. I know I've been doing quite a few of these recently, just because I enjoy talking about this game and I'm trying to find new ways to, uh, like, talk about new things, because I, I talk way too much. Like, if I talk, if I do a no evidence run, I'm talking for an hour. If I do any simple video, I'm talking for an hour. Um, so yeah, let me know what specifically you would be interested in, like, preferably something that can be, like, kind of narrowed down, that isn't, like, super expansive, like, all oh, fucking ghosts again, because that takes, like, two hours or something like that. Like, we could do another, I can do another no evidence guide. I've done lots of those. Uh, but let me know if there's anything specific about this game that you want to want to hear me talk about. I would love to hear it in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you did. If you're not subscribed, please do so. If you liked the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. And if you want to join the lovely gamers here in chat, you can join us for twitch.tv slash insim or click the link in the description down below thank you so much and i'll see you in the next one bye guys have a good one bye bye